what I wanted to do today was sort of not so much talk about Hello Sunday Morning as a program, but hopefully share some of the, the reasons why I think it works so successfully and why there's been so many people that have signed up. The first thing comes down to this. <laughs> How embarrassing. There we go. So I think traditional health promotion, and especially on universities, you see this. Um, we have the carrot and the stick, right? And this is a stick. This is where the university has gone and said, okay, um, you can only have one glass of alcohol. <laughs> and so the people that obviously, you know, as a drug taking society, we find our ways around, we find the loopholes to get what we perceive as what we can't have. So this is an example of a health promotion campaign that's not working. Um, whereas we like to look at what we do is sort of present all carrots and all sticks in an open for format where people can make their own choice. So the three things that have made Hello Sunday Morning um, so successful, it comes down to, it has a simple ask for people to do that's open to anyone, and I encourage every single person in this room to do one at some stage, no matter how much you drink. Um, it has a story, it has a narrative behind it. There's a, uh, in a way, it's kind of, we all are like the hero notion, you know, like we all like to think that we can be the heroes of our own lives, whether we like to admit it or not. There's this real triumph, and that's what makes us great as people, that we can, and I'm sure you know, you experience in the work here, where people are you know, rock bottom, and then are able to climb themselves out of the darkest of dark into the light. And there's that narrative that happens, and people like sharing that, and that's how it sort of evolves and gets bigger and bigger and more challenging. And the second thing is how we share the story. So in traditional, um, AOD communication or even AOD programs, often you've had this experience that's happened within these four walls, within the program, and it's been amazing and life-changing, but that story only actually gets out to the family and friends, unless that person comes back as a mentor in the you know, Momentum program or something like that. So what digital communication has capacity to do is share it on a much larger scale. So that someone in England is going through just the same reasons as someone in Australia is going through around drinking, needing alcohol, changing their life, and they can see and be inspired by that story themselves. So firstly, the simple ask. An example of, of one thing that um, I think works really well in terms of you know, the, modern, the modern economy, the modern consumer society, is having a product in which people can purchase. So what this is um, Tom's shoes. Has anyone heard of this? No one? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so Tom's shoes is this social enterprise or social innovation that I'm really fascinated by and, and really into in how you, you create a consumer um, behavior that contributes to a positive change. So this guy went over to Argentina, saw a problem in, um, he's actually American, this is the Australian version of the site went over to um, Argentina and through South America and saw that a big problem was foot infections from kids not having shoes um, to walk around in the cities and things like that. So he set up this enterprise where you buy one shoe and then one shoe from that purchase then goes to someone in South America as well as dollars and fundraising, things like that. So having a simple way for people to go, yeah, actually the shoe's pretty cool and he's also expanded to eyewear, um, where you feel good about that. And I think in in, traditionally in the treatment sector and um, you know, organisations that we all are a part of, oftentimes it's all about you know, funding and grants and things like that, which is extraordinarily hard. I've found out for myself um, in the last year, and I can kind of imagine 20 years of doing that. Um, so finding ways to have a simple ask for people to per buy into the experience or to donate their funds and, and support the organisation can be really powerful. Another uh, example of that is you know, November. There's a couple of most around here. <laughs> uh, I hope they're about November. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. no, no, no. Um, so this is another way that um, the average punter, and I say that with much endearment, the average punter can go, you know, I haven't got a big issue or I haven't got a real passion for this, but here's my little mo and here's my little piece of awareness that can contribute to a greater change or a greater awareness of some specific issue. So I really like this idea of how we can not look at treatment or services as you know, the individual, but look at it as a collective society and how you know, we can have different asks for different levels of interest in people. 
Because if we're talking about alcohol, it's something that affects, you know, it costs us $36 billion a year to keep the problem, and we spend $25 billion on it as well. It's something that doesn't affect people that come to services like this, it affects us all. So we need us out there that have this greater sense of call to action. And the ARF, or now FARE study, showed that 79% of Australians believe that we're a nation with a drinking problem. So what Hello Sunday Morning is, is an ask saying, well, if you actually believe that we're a nation with a drinking problem and you want to do something about it, here's a way. Put your money where your mouth is and, and do something. So that's our intent and that's what we're trying to create. Whether that's through Hello Sunday Morning or other things, that we can actually collectively make the population responsible for the problem we all see. The second thing is um, being the change. And I've got a quick video that I love. I'm not sure, probably the geeks have seen this video, um, which is three of us <laughs> on Twitter feed. Um, but this is something that I think um, is a great metaphor around social movements and social change in terms of actually going first and having the courage and the confidence and the ability to take a risk every now and then to do something that's right for the better of people. And there's a TED talk, if you ever get to see it, about someone that dissects that and why that's successful. And I think it's, um, you know, with, within the context of Hello Sunday Morning, I remember halfway through it, still, you know, trying to find my feet on what it was going to look like or what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do something with it after I finished my year, but actually having an ask out there for other people, it was never going to be successful in the, unless others got involved. In fact, I don't tell many people this, but um, originally, three months into it, my roommate's like, I'm going to do it with you. I'm like, you can't do this. This is my thing. Like, <laughs> I didn't let him blog about it. or like, I don't tell anyone that, but um, no, now I have. So he, yeah, so, but it sort of like really reinforced home when other people started getting involved and how amazing it can be because we all have our own story and we all have our own intricacies and idiosyncrasies and, and, greatness, that each of that inspires someone else that has a similar sort of greatness and it keeps going on and on. Um, I have a real you know, vendetta and I'm completely against uh, advertising this like this. And the whole reason why Hello Sunday Morning, and I'm sorry federal government, <laughs> um, the whole reason why Hello Sunday Morning started was because I saw things like this and was part of an agency that was producing things like this and I was like, this doesn't act, it's hypocritical. You know, there's no integrity, there's no level of accountability to anyone in this. It's trying to, it's ob objectively trying to put a problem onto young people and say, this is something that's your problem, binge drinking this new thing that 
you know, young people apparently invented in the last five years, that you need to fix it up. But we're going to tell you that this is the problem you're causing and you're going to change it. But I believe that. I think we are all part of this drinking culture and we all have the capacity and the responsibility to change it. This is an example of what I feel the contrast in the story of something that's like this, where it's actors that is sort of just creating this misnomer around, you know, not even why people drink, but the, the product of it, into something around the real reasons why we drink. And so this story came out on the, um, I think it's the 4th, on the 4th, what's that, January, February, March, April. Um, <laughs> in April of my 12 months. And this was me talking about all of a sudden, um, you know, I'd gone out as a 22 year old and I'd never really dated anyone without alcohol. And all of a sudden it was really awkward. And I didn't actually end up with any dates. And I didn't know what was going on in my life and I didn't know what I needed to do as a person to get more dates. So I set out on this adventure and this post is about me sort of coming to the realization that obviously, you know, this is a confronting thing for, for many people to do, especially people that are 22 years old and actually reaching for you know, a, a higher quality person. You know, and it's a qualifying thing. This is online and still is online. And one, I remember now one of the dates that I, I did have, um, she'd obviously read this and, <laughs> and said, like, one of the first questions, she's like, so am I a low hanging fruit or a high hanging fruit? <laughs> <laughs> But it's, you know, it's kind of silly and, and it's laughable, but it's, you know, the real reasons why we drink. It's not because we're trying to avoid being beat up or, you know, anything worse happened to us. There's small little psychological drivers behind why we do this behaviour, for many of us. And then there's deeper psychological drivers for people that end up in serious trouble with it. I think as a society we need to embrace this kind of knowledge and embrace this reality that we're not drinking because it's, you know, some silly thing. We're drinking for a small amount of pleasure and the majority amount because we're hiding behind something or we're trying to avoid something. And embracing that sense of mental health, I think, will get us to a solution and create a better understanding of why we do it in the first place. Another example of kind of the story and, and what I feel is um, unique to, you know, an issue that's kind of been going on and on and on around cancer research and, you know, how do you get a consumer involved in the process? You know, that's not hasn't had any experience with cancer. How do you actually create something? And I think Livestrong is a perfect way, whilst there's many faults, but I think it's the way of the future in terms of creating brands that have a really strong, not only call to action in terms of all the merch you can buy, um, but there's a strong message behind Lance Armstrong and actually harnessing these stories of which there's many out there. I think within alcohol, there's a lot of really great stories of people that have recovered, but it's almost, I think with Alcoholics Anonymous, it's almost avoided completely, rather than embraced, because we all go through it. And harnessing those stories is gonna, you know, really inspire a lot more people. I shared this story of uh, Callum last night, and I wanted to share a little bit of a different, in fact, Probably last night was a little bit more juicy, so you should get along to your AGMs more. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but this is Callum. So Callum did, did a Hello Sunday morning in the first... Yeah, in the first year. He was, he was one of the first ten to actually do it. And he started up his Hello Sunday morning because um, he'd found, he started his uni degree and, and found that he was failing at university and decided that he needed to succeed at it. Um, so he signed up for a three month period and actually came to quite a significant amount of realizations. And one of them that I, I, I really love is he's sharing a story and you can go online and sit, just type in Callum Spencer and you can find all this. You can see from his beginning all the challenges he's had, all the interesting things that he went through and the success that he ultimately had towards the experience. But I wanna read out this, this final paragraph um, that I think is the best kind of story, if we want to change the way young people drink, the best kind of story that challenges them in their mind to question the role that alcohol has in terms of confidence and identity. And he says, he talks about going out, and this is during his Hello Sunday mornings, towards the end, and actually having a good time. 
He said, this was a challenge that I wanted to face. I wanted to dance, I wanted to be with my friends and have fun without thinking about it, if I looked stupid or not. But something was stopping me. I wanted to not care about what people thought of me, not to need alcohol to make me believe that. So readers, I did just that. I danced and made a complete fool of myself, but had the most fun I'd had out all year. A friend of mine smoked to me as we walked outside. Dude, I thought you said you weren't drinking. I'd be lying if I didn't smile. I, and I want you to sort of put a comparison between this and the way we've traditionally done health promotion, which has been a massive stick, you know? And it's been, don't do this, but there's been no options. There's been no inspiring stories for someone to go, oh, I can be more like this. And I remember, personally, um, when I was 19, I did this uh, personal development course, and I was a little brat. Um, and I was also really depressed at the time in my life. Um, and I still remember this experience where this guy who was a bit older than me, he was like 22, 23, and he had his shit together. And in the middle of this process, and I was being like, you know, I don't want to be here, I don't want to be part of it. Um, typical teenager. And, he, and the facilitator got this 24-year-old up next to me and then turned to me like this. So I was facing him here, and I was like, whatever, you know, kind of thing. And the facility goes to this 23-year-old guy that had, kind of had his shit together. It was kind of like really good-looking, big guy. He goes, so what do you see when you see you know, me? What do you see when you see this guy? And he goes, it makes me sick to see someone losing their opportunity. And that just killed me. Like, it just hit me right in, in the solar plexus in a way that I've never been hit before. And I think about it now, and it's like a moment in my life where... I was actually like, yeah, you know, I've followed down this path that's probably not making me happy, and that's the kind of person that I want to be like. But until I had that experience, I never really saw the next step into, you know, how I was going to be a better person or a more confident person. And that was the first time that, you know, I had that. And this is how Hello Sunday Morning works, I think, in the, in the best possible way. Because each one of you in this room, me, Ray, everyone, has an opportunity to inspire 10 or 20 people around us. Only incrementally, but incredibly importantly. And it's that choice that we all have to make, you know, not just with Hello Sunday morning, but with other things. Here's um, Callum's... Um, it's just, just the fact that... Um, the misconceptions of alcohol, and the fact that, like, so many people see that they need alcohol to have a good time. And I guess... Lots of people my age will all say that they need to have X amount of drinks to have a good time. Like they put a number on it, like and I find that really sad. And the fact that you know there's a lot of there's a lot of big things out there that you, that are just basically about sucking as much money from people as as, as they can. And alcohol is just one another one of those things where you know it's you, it's you give people you give people bottles of water and say it's alcohol and they'll drink it and then they'll have a good time because they think that they need it. Like if you do one of those placebo things, like that'd be that'd be all they need. So but basically, I guess that's my biggest my biggest my biggest lesson from Hello Sunday Morning would be that I that a lot of people out there, a lot more people than I thought out there, that do see alcohol as a necessity. And but at the same time, there are more people. Like even just having this com having a conversation with people, the fact that there are more people willing to have that change if they really wanted to. So just to recap, I think the biggest things around creating a social movement or the reason why Hello Sunday Morning has been successful is that there's a story to be shared, there's a hero narrative that we all have the capacity to live and be, and there's also a simple ask. So in an era of experiment, I want to ask how many people here would be willing to do one next year? Good? All right. Good numbers. Okay, I look forward to seeing you on there. Thank you. Cheers.